This project has been about database of Kenyan objects in foreign museums, specifically museums in Europe and North America. Uh, those are the ones we have covered so far. And the significance is just to understand uh, the kind of objects uh, people are interested in from this country and the stories those objects can tell. Um, I don't think it is all objects that are of particular interest, especially in conversations about decolonization. It is objects that should be home but aren't. It is objects that are precious, it is objects that are rare, it is um, objects that were taken under specific violent duress, um, such as, as spoils of war. Um, it is objects that have very deep significance to the people. It is, it is items, and it's difficult to call them items, like human remains, you know. Yeah, when we started IIP, I was pretty much in favor of restitution now, and I, I still am. But what, what has changed is the, is the way I see these objects in, in Germany now. I, I, I would not say anymore that they need to go necessarily home, because it's also the way we look at these objects changes, so they become evidence. Repatriation will be a very straightforward thing, bringing back the objects, uh, and that's it. Uh, taking back the community of origin, uh, then the community takes care of it, or decides where they want the object to be stored or displayed. The thing about absence is that you, you, you can feel it, you can see the, the corners and the, the boundaries of it, but you don't know what the absence is. Mm. And I've come to see that these objects are, are narratives. For instance, um, one of the objects that I've really been thinking about are the smoking pipes that were used by women. There's a whole narrative there about like what women do with leisure. Uh, and this idea that women used to smoke tobacco for leisure, that's, that doesn't happen in Kenya now. And women who smoke in Kenya now are seen to be promiscuous, uh, worldly, there's all these like euphemistic terms for free. There are so many things I don't know that even I would ask my parents and since my mom was like brought up in Nairobi, there's so many things she also doesn't know. But it's not, I don't think it's her fault, I just think things weren't present and by the time she was like old enough to know these things or even at a young age we were already very colonized, many of these things were already taken away. So for them to be back here, it would be able to even give us pride as like as a Kikuyu or as a Luo, like, you know, this is my culture, this is what I know, this is where I belong, this is what we used to do, yeah. The tragedy is not the fact that the objects aren't here, the tragedy is that the knowledge systems and the cultures and the belief systems that produce those objects don't exist in the same way as they did. And they were demeaned and degraded and demolished in some cases under a colonial system, so those objects can never be produced in that way again. There's one of the objects that we refer to um, in our exhibition, which is the, a drum from the Pokomo people. That object, that, and, and it's, a, it's an item that's very sacred to them. Nobody except British Museum employees has seen that object in over 100 years. It has been visited a couple of times, maybe once, by the Pokomo people who had to submit an application to visit their own object. Do you see what I mean when I say the foundation, the foundational premise of museuming and the purpose of museuming, the value of museuming, is really going to have to be rethought um, if objects are going to move in any way that makes sense. If we allowed artists, graphic designers, um, guys who like spray graffiti on matatus and stuff, access to these objects, what like color stories would they take from this? Like what can they imagine out of this histories? That might be an interesting form of restitution. <laughs>